Coming up on today's show, Tesla publishes another great quarter of results. A fantastic new camping trailer or caravan for EVs breaks a record thanks to its onboard batteries. And we tell you how you can win a Tesla of your choice or 50,000 US dollars all while supporting a good cause. These stories and more coming next. Welcome back to TEN, Transport Evolved News. We have had a very busy week with lots of fun stuff going on, including an event at the Portland International Raceway and a day of moving Winter and his husband into their new home. This show is sponsored by the Electric Auto Association. Stick around until the end of the show to find out how joining the EAA can help you finance your own clean energy or transportation purchase. Today's show is also sponsored by the Chicago Chesed Fund, seventh annual Tesla raffle. So watch around until the end to find out how to enter and how to get 25 bucks off two tickets. At the start of the week, Tesla issued its second quarter earnings, posting a record number of vehicle deliveries, revenue and more. Total production for the quarter rose to 260,421 cars, with the overwhelming majority of those being Model 3 and Model Y, while deliveries broke new records at 201,250 cars, up 122% year on year. Tesla's automotive gross margin grew too as economies of scale came into play. Despite a noticeable drop in the number Number of regulatory credits Tesla sold to rival automakers and challenges with chip shortages, Tesla finished the quarter with a total profit of $1.6 billion, $1.45 per share using the adjusted method, and $1.14 billion, $1.02 profit using the unadjusted method. Nicely done, Tesla. On Monday this week, I and the rest of the team headed off to the Portland International Raceway, where we were guests at Akimoto's FUV and Friends summer event. There we got to see and ride the production version of the Akimoto Roadster, we saw the Akimoto flatbed and some really fun and custom one-off FUVs. The company also surprised everyone by showcasing a semi-autonomous Akimoto that could be remote controlled, as well as announcing a truly ingenious brand new software update that hopefully next year will enable torque vectoring and drive-by wire capabilities in every new and existing Akimoto FUV using just two motors, making it easier and safer to drive and eliminating the need for a separate steering motor. We've got a bunch of stuff from the event to share, including an interview with the one and only Sandy Munro, so keep your eyes peeled for that over the next few weeks. The UK's Science Museum is among one of the most celebrated and respected in the world, and over the years it's held some truly amazing events and exhibitions. But this week it and Shell are in the spotlight after claims that it signed a gagging clause with Shell over sponsorship of one of its exhibitions. The subject of the gagging clause, the Our Future Planet exhibition, an exhibition featuring carbon capture and storage technologies, as well as some climate change solutions inspired by the natural world. As sponsor of the exhibition, Shell reportedly required that the Science Museum make no statement that could be seen as damaging to Shell's reputation. When dealing with an exhibition about climate change, that's a big problem and many boycotts are now in full force against Shell, including its various charging networks for EVs. A fire broke out at the end of the week at the Tesla Big Battery Mega Pack Energy Storage Facility in Morobol, South Australia. As reported by local media, multiple fire crews have been working hard to contain the blaze and prevent it from spreading to other battery packs. The facility had not yet been fully commissioned and was undergoing final testing when the fire occurred. The cause of the fire has yet to be determined. As you probably guess, we film this show a day ahead of release and as such, we can't promise that we have the most up-to-date information concerning the fire. However, when we have more, we will of course share. We're often asked by viewers why you can't build a caravan or camping trailer for our North American audience with a battery pack and motors integrated into it to make it easier to tow behind an EV. And the answer of course is that there's no reason. In fact, several folks over the years have built their own DIY camping trailers offering just that. German company Delfest had thought the same thing too, building the e-home caravan, a concept that could power itself along the road behind an electric car. Now in production form, it's just broken a range record, helping an e-tron sportback travel 386 kilometers, 240 miles across the Alps on a single charge, with the car using 82 kilowatt hours of energy and the trailer using 74 kilowatt hours of electricity. That's impressive. There's nothing worse than being asked by someone what it's like working for a particular company when you're on the clock, especially if you're worried about the implications that you'll be in trouble if you say the wrong thing. 
But drivers on the boring company loop in Las Vegas have a lot more to worry about, remembering the script provided to them by the boring company, telling them what they can and can't say about working for the company. In addition to some fairly prescriptive stock responses they're supposed to give when asked about the tunnel and its safety, a report from TechCrunch details how drivers are expected to refer to their boss Elon Musk as awesome, inspiring and motivating. If they're asked if they like working for him, drivers are expected to say that he's a great leader that motivates staff to do great work. Company scripts are sadly all too common, but this one gives me all kinds of North Korea vibes. The Chidemo DC quick charging standard is now more than 10 years old and predates the CCS Type 1 and CCS Type 2 connections that most automakers prefer to use on electric cars today. Over the years, it's been slowly dropped outside of Japan as automakers switch to the two approved standards, one for Europe and one for North America, but nevertheless, charging providers have generally, reluctantly, continued to provide Chidemo charging. Now that's going away with Electrify America announcing that it's no longer going to install Chidemo stations at locations from 2022 onwards. This is terrible news for anyone with a Nissan Leaf or Mitsubishi Aimeev, and I think the only hope for them is that someone comes up with an appropriate adapter to let them use CCS infrastructure. Tesla is rumoured to be changing its retail strategy in an attempt to streamline its purchasing process, save money and give customers an even easier buying experience. According to Electrek, it's looking to move away from flashy mall-based showrooms and towards more affordable locations, turning them into delivery centres where customers can just turn up to pick up their new cars. Additionally, it's working to change how its test drive fleet works, moving to remote management of test fleets and operating test drives where convenient to customers. Given that the majority of Tesla customers are already carrying out their ordering online, it gives Tesla a way to significantly save pennies on its retail locations while still providing customer sales and service. It's not quite the move that Tesla tried in 2019 to end its retail locations completely, but it seems a far more logical, better thought out alternative. One of the largest problems with on-street public electric vehicle charging infrastructure, especially in large cities, is that it takes up a lot of space and can affect parking patterns. But UK company Trojan Energy has just launched the first of a new type of charging point in Brent, Essex. Rather than have a stationary charge station, Trojan installs a row of road-adjacent power points flush the pavement that interlock with a removable, accessibility-approved charging pole with attached charge cable. Customers, who get their own pole when they sign up and credit their account with funds, then attach the pole to the socket in order to start charging. It's less intrusive than a dedicated charging station, and it doesn't require special parking regulations to use. While it's summer in the Northern Hemisphere right now, it's well into winter in the Southern Hemisphere, and that means for automakers looking for some extra winter testing, New Zealand is the place to be. We reported a few weeks ago that Rivian was already on its way to New Zealand to do some of its final winter testing for the R1T and R1S, and now we've got proof of those vehicles testing on the slopes of Wanaka, New Zealand, as well as video of the Xpeng P7 and Tesla Model 3 doing the same thing. Yes. Tesla's still doing winter testing too. Huge thanks to Al Yates from Ecotricity New Zealand for sharing the video, and if you're in New Zealand, keep your eyes peeled for more EVs winter testing. The White House has announced that EV charging infrastructure will receive a total of $7.5 billion of funding in the Compromised Infrastructure Bill currently being negotiated on Capitol Hill. The Compromised Bill also includes $55 billion for clean water systems, $73 billion on clean energy transmission, as well as significant funding for renewable energy generation and clean energy job creation. The bill is advancing to a Senate debate, so it isn't a foregone conclusion, and critics of the committee responsible for coming to the compromise have noted the lack of racial diversity and representation among its members. Frankly, both of these things need to be addressed in order for the final bill to be truly equitable and sustainable. And now it's time for short shorts. The Green Mountain State is getting a bit greener with the news that the state's largest utility is purchasing an all-electric bucket truck and an all-electric stake body truck from Lion Electric for servicing the grid there. Expect more utilities to follow suit. Tesla has announced it's holding an AI day on August 19th. Given Elon Musk's past comments that he wants the company to eventually be seen as an AI and robotics firm first and foremost, it should be a very exciting day indeed. Cattle has become the first battery maker in the automotive industry to showcase a sodium ion battery, with announced plans for pre-production processes to start in 2023. It does not contain lithium, cobalt or nickel. 
Tesla has begun the release of a new over-the-air software update containing a variety of really nice improvements to the user experience and interface of its cars. Winter tells me that the new car wash mode alone is enough to have an excited about the install. Battery recycling startup Redwood Materials, founded by former Tesla CTO JB Straubel, has raised $700 million for funding from a major expansion of its operations. GAC Aon, the Chinese electric vehicle manufacturer, has demonstrated charging technology it claims can bring the time to charge an EV in line with the time it takes to fill up with a tank of petrol. It's big news if it pans out as promised, but we really want to see it firsthand. In the face of poor EV sales figures in China, due perhaps to a different electric vehicle buyer demographic than in Europe, Volkswagen has announced its plans to rethink its Chinese market strategies. The Mustang Mach-E is already in production, but now it looks like Ford is using a Mustang Mach-E body to hide a mystery EV test vehicle. We can't share photos here because we don't have rights clearance, but we're crossing our fingers for a Maverick EV. Starting a few days ago, all deliveries by Parcel, Giant, DPD in the UK city of Oxford will be made by electric delivery vehicles. DPD added the electric vehicles to its fleet earlier this year. Mercedes-Benz has announced plans to showcase its production version of the upcoming EQE electric sedan, EQB EV, the first all-electric luxury sedan from Mercedes-AMG, and a concept mercedes Maybach EV at an upcoming AII mobility event in September. Audi's Q4 e-tron, the upmarket sibling to Volkswagen's ID4 electric SUV, is now available for pre-order in Europe with a dual motor all-wheel drive configuration. It's basically the ID4 GTX in an upmarket suit. Also now available are a longer range and sportback variant. A fake advert claiming to sell a GM EV1 led journalist Jason Tursinski, of course, down a rabbit hole that eventually led the collector, who is painstakingly attempting to restore the legendary and vanishingly rare electric vehicle to the road. Desperate to cling to its hybrid drivetrain and truck profits, Toyota is upping its lobbying efforts around the world to get governments to pull back on electrification commitments and harsher fuel economy standards. It's kind of sad, honestly. BMW plans to highlight a circular economy vision of more environmentally conscious car development, production, use and end of life at the IAA Mobility event in September. Ford says that pre-orders for its F1 Lightning electric pickup have exceeded 120,000. It's still a tenth of Tesla's Cybertruck reservations, but it's a milestone nevertheless. Finding that access to charging can be a postcode lottery in which one's level of wealth is a huge factor in able to being finding charging, the UK Competition and Markets Authority has laid out plans for a more equitable charging network ahead of plans to ban sales of new internal combustion cars. BMW is looking for manufacturing partners interested in producing two electric scooters the company has designed, but doesn't intend to put into production itself. Disgraced Nikola Motor CEO Trevor Milton has been indicted on three counts of fraud, with prosecutors claiming that he lied about nearly all aspects of the company's operations. We covered this in depth on the channel yesterday. EV taxi startup Revel is allowed to deploy 49 new Tesla Model Y taxis in New York City after the firm argued its application to do so predated regulatory changes designed to limit the total number of taxis on the roads of the Big Apple. Solid Motorcycles has shown concept designs for a futuristic looking cafe racer that incorporates the battery pack as a structural element, much like many internal combustion motorcycles do with their engines. An analysis by Inside EVs finds that while Tesla may still have the best peak DC charging speed, when charge ramping is taken into account, the Mercedes EQS, which charges faster for longer, may eke out an overall charging speed increase over the Model S plant. UK firm Electrogenic has executed an absolutely stunning EV conversion of one of the most iconic cars in automotive history. This simply gorgeous Citroen DS conversion means we want three, please. Rivian has expanded real-world testing markets for its Amazon delivery vehicle, which the company says remains on schedule despite delays impacting its consumer truck delivery plans. DAB Motorcycles has unveiled designs for the beautiful concept e-electric motorcycle. With lines that call to mind the popular Husqvarna Svartplin 401, it's a bike we'd love to see on the road. Rivian has showcased the upcoming R1T's off-road prowess with a seriously impressive video of one climbing a steep grade in Moab, Utah. If anyone at Rivian is watching, we're ready and willing to give this a go ourselves. Though still a few years away from its North American debut, there are indications that Volkswagen's ID Buzz electric van will have several variants available aimed at the ride-sharing and commercial vehicle markets.
A pair of influencers are going to be taking the new Segway C80 electric moped on a two-week, 1,200-mile promotional trip from Seattle, Washington to San Diego, California. Given the schedule and the top speed of these things, we're going to pass. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. How would you like to win a Tesla of your choice or $50,000 in cash? Well, if you're a US resident, now's your chance, thanks to the 7th Annual Chicago Chesed Fund's Tesla Raffle. The charity offers more than 80 programs to help Chicago families survive tough times, deal with medical bills, fund education, start a family, get back on their feet, and train for new careers, to name a few, and its 44,000 square foot warehouse has helped more than 2,400 families alone in the last year. To support the charity, its annual Tesla raffle gives you the chance to win a Tesla Model S, 3, X, Y, or Cybertruck, or even $50,000 in cash with each ticket, costing $100. But as with previous years, we've teamed up with the raffle to offer you a $25 discount off two tickets, letting you buy two tickets for one $175 instead of $200. To enter and for more information, head to ccfraffle.com and enter Transport Evolved at the checkout. Ever since its Quattro first burst onto the scene in the 80s, Audi has held a long established connection with the world of rallying. And now, to take part in one of the world's most iconic and challenging off road events, the Dakar Rally, Audi has unveiled an all new series hybrid rally car. Called the Audi RS Q e tron, it has an all electric 500 kilowatt drivetrain driven by a 50 kilowatt hour battery pack and TFSI engine. While we would rather see an all-electric vehicle compete, the Dakar's incredibly long stages, upwards of 800 kilometers or 500 miles per day across some really remote landscapes, has led Audi to reach this compromise for now. Given that Dakar wants its races to be powered by green energy by 2030, it's no wonder that automakers are starting to electrify their entries, and that's frankly how it should be. And finally, Volkswagen CEO Herbert Diess has been undergoing something of a image adjustment in recent years, going from a fairly traditional automotive CEO into something a little closer to Elon Musk. He's been more active on social media, has engaged in more online interviews and events, and this week he took to the water to thank the Volkswagen Group for the amount of work they've managed to achieve this year on an all-electric surfboard developed by a Skunk Works team at Audi. We first saw this back in CES a few years ago, but to his credit, Dees showed his skills in the water and seemed to be enjoying himself. I wonder what he'll do next. I guess going up to space is out of the question, unless Elon could hook him up. And on that note, we are done for the day. But before I go, I would like to thank the Electric Auto Association for sponsoring today's show. They have been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967, and they firmly believe that our future depends on us making the switch to clean green electric vehicles today. The EAA can help you find someone near to you that you can help make that switch to electric. It can help you become an EV educator, and it can point you in the direction of monthly meetups for like-minded EV fans. And if you become a member, you'll gain access to a new clean energy and EV loan program set up between the EAA and the Colorado Clean Energy Credit Union. You can find out more by heading to electricauto.org. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel, hitting those bells, and doing the same to our other two channels as well. That's Transport Evolved Take Two and Transport Evolved Shorts. We'd love you to support us through Patreon or Kofi if so inclined. And don't forget, you can buy your own tea swag at our Redbubble store. The link is below. And if you are feeling chatty, don't forget to drop by our free to join Discord chat room. I or someone else will be back soon with more video goodness. But until then, thanks for joining me. Keep evolving.